Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Quarantine Collections on this April Fool's Day. I would try to make a joke, but I don't think it's time for jokes, and I'm not a very funny person to begin with. But we do have something that's kind of hilarious set up for you today that I think you all will get a kick out of. So again, my name is Travis Gilbert. I'm the, um, uh, what is my title? My goodness. <laughs> I am the uh, educator and collections coordinator here at the Old Baldy Foundation. And I will be following along on um, my phone here. So if y'all are out there following, Give us a shout out in the comments. Let us know where you're listening from, what your connection to Bald Head Island is, and if you have any questions about today's topic or any other topics, or have some ideas about what you would like to hear from us about in the coming days and weeks, leave us a little shout out in those comments and we will get back to you. Today I thought we would uh, go from the opposite end of the spectrum here on Bald Head Island's history. Yesterday we talked about the American Revolution, uh, which is one of the first historical events that have occurred on Bald Head Island. Today we're going to go way up to the 1980s. For many of you this might be um, you know, recent memory within your lifetime. We're going to go to the era to uh, Carolina Cape Fear Corporation. Uh, this is a, uh, a corporation that bought Bald Head Island from Frank Sherrill in 1970. And immediately after purchasing Bald Head Island, this corporation does several things. Uh, first of all, they begin construction on a golf course. Uh, they need some sort of, of leisure activity uh, for folks to do when they're staying out here on Bald Head Island. And that golf course is designed by George Cobb of Augusta National fame. And uh, construction on the golf course began roughly around 1972. Another uh, task that Carolina Cape Fear Corporation begins is surveying the island into uh, lots so that folks from this generator society era can begin constructing vacation homes or beach houses out here on Bald Head Island. And we brought to you uh, several days ago some oral histories from the Generator Society era. You heard from Charlotte Dunlap, who owned the Sand Fiddler, today uh, now known as the Blue Pearl, along South Bald Head Wind. And we'll be bringing you several more of those oral histories. Now the third task that Carolina Cape Fear Corporation undertakes is the construction of an inn along South Bald Head Wind. They understand that in order to market these residential lots out here on Bald Head Island, you need a way for folks to experience just a little bit of what Bald Head Island can offer. And you're not going to put these folks up into Generator Society homes to make them a guest. You need some sort of inn. You need some sort of hotel and at least a restaurant or um, a dining facility. Uh, again, so you can begin marketing this island and everything this island has to offer to folks who may be interested in purchasing a lot and constructing a home in the future. And the construction on this inn began around 1972. It coincided with the construction of the golf course. And they decided to build a series of octagonal um, buildings uh, on a pedestal, I'm going to show you a picture in a minute, along South Bald Head Wind or South Beach very close to the modern day Bald Head Island Club. And this facility, a series of octagonal buildings on a pedestal connected by a series of boardwalks became known throughout the mid 70s, late 70s and early 80s as the Bald Head Island Inn. And it was the first hotel style accommodations constructed and facilitated here on Bald Head Island. 
So in David Stick's book, uh, one of the earliest histories of Bald Head Island, we have several pictures courtesy of Bill Henderson of the construction of the inn. And you can see, as I was saying there, they built this inn. Uh, it was a series of octagonal buildings on these pedestals right there at the surf uh, at uh, South Beach near the modern Bald Head Island Club. So they were um, interesting designs, I will say that. Uh, kind of reminds me of today, if you're familiar with Bald Head Island, with the, with the villas. Uh, not too dissimilar. Uh, of course, the villas don't have an octagonal shape, but um, they're up on these pedestals. We have another picture, and this kind of foreshadows the demise of the Bald Head Island Inn. This is from our collections. You can see again up on pedestals, and you can see how there is a boardwalk right there. This is a covered boardwalk. Not all the boardwalks were covered. Uh, but that is how the various rooms and attachments were connected. Now, uh, the construction finished around the mid-70s, and immediately uh, one of the most hilarious or common occurrences or mentions in all of our histories and our collections about the Bald Head Island Inn is that's where the ice machine was and that's where the refrigerator was during the Generator Society era. So ice in the Generator Society times was called Bald Head Diamonds. That's how valuable ice was on an island with no electricity and they were all, uh, they all enjoyed their cocktails to say the least. So there are all these mentions in literature about the Generator Society that security guards, there was a security guard for Carolina Cape Fear Corporation and one of their daily tasks was to make sure that people weren't breaking into the Bald Head Island Inn to raid the ice machine or to raid or borrow the refrigerator. So you can imagine uh, what, a, what a crazy time uh, to have ice at that top of your totem pole. Now, of course, there was a dining room, as I had said, and one of the coolest things I think we have in our subject files is a luncheon menu from the Baltic Island Inn. You see you have the logo there. And let me just uh, read off some things from this luncheon menu. And it has spring of 1980 on here. So from the sandwich board, you could get a cured ham sandwich for three twenty-five. dollars You can get a turkey breast thinly sliced served on rye or white with lettuce, tomato, and mayo for three fifty. dollars You can get a hamburger for two seventy-five. dollars Large juicy ground to your specifications served with all the trimmings on a toasted deli roll. And not only could you get a hamburger for $2.75, you could make it a cheeseburger for an additional 25 cents. What a deal. Salads, we got a chef salad for $3.75 or a toss salad for $2.75. Those, of course, are served with wafers and your choice of dressing. And uh, the last section here, lunch for the hearty. This is my favorite section. Chesapeake Bay oysters, lightly breaded, large premium select oysters, a marvelous delicacy, fried golden brown served with salad, fries, and hot bread for the great price of $7.25. What a deal. Get clams for $4.75 or fantail shrimp for, uh, for $7.25. You can get a ham steak, sugar cured with light smoked flavor. Grilled tender and tasty, served with hot bread, salad, and fries for $5.75. Or, for the best view I think of all, you can get a steak grilled to your taste, served with a salad, fries, and hot bread for $5.75. What a deal! These prices, that's, that's my uh, April Fool's joke for you here. 
Beverages, we have carbonated milk, coffee, or tea for 65 cents. And of course, all this comes with a 15% service charge served from noon till two o'clock daily. And you can access this menu via our website, oldbaldy.org. It is in the subject files. Look, of course, under Bald Head Island Inn, and you can um, revel in the hilarious nature of some of these prices and some of these offerings in 1980. So when you went to the Bald Head Island Inn and you got your fantail shrimp for $7.25, what was it served on? Of course, none other than official China from the Bald Head Island Inn. And this is one of our newest accessions in the, um, in the uh, collections here at the Old Baldy Foundation. Polly, or uh, excuse me, Marianne Reed uh, donated a series of china from the Baldhead Island Inn just last year. Uh, Ms. Reed, she, she passed away uh, this past summer. Before she passed away, she had reached out to us. She had been in a um, facility down in Florida. And uh, she said that I had had this and uh, it was from the Baltic Island Inn. Uh, I was able to acquire it after an event. And uh, I think that it belongs in the Smith Island Museum of History. So we were very fortunate to receive this gift from Ms. Reed. Uh, we looked through with uh, the current developer uh, who ended up acquiring the inn in 1983 and um, all the galities were straight so we were able to accession or formally acquire ownership on behalf of the Old Baldy Foundation and it is now one of us one of as I said one of our newest accessions here we have two sets what I'm showing you here is a charger. Um, this is you know, where the plates and various um, different China courses would have been set upon. And of course, here in the center, we have uh, the, the logo for Carolina Cape Fear Corporation and later the Baldhead Island Corporation. And it's not too dissimilar to today's logo. They kind of build off of one another. We have these three developers, beginning with uh, Carolina Kefir Corporation. And then in the middle, we have Baldhead Island Corporation, which was run by uh, Jim Harrington uh, under kind of the, the financial um, support of Walter Davis. And then it is the Baldhead Island Corporation who sells this island and the amenities they had constructed to Bald Head Island Limited LLC under the Mitchell family, George Mitchell. So perhaps in a future episode, we will kind of bring out uh, various examples of this logo and how it progressed throughout the 1970s and into the 1980s. Also in that subject file related to the Bald Head Island Inn, I brought out a reservation form. Let's talk about, so if we know we can get a tossed salad for $2.75 or a soda for 65 cents, how much did it cost to stay at the Bald Head Island Inn? Well, uh, another uh, kind of universal figure in the development years of Bald Head Island is Polly Fish kind of the same era as Marianne Reed. And Polly Fish here left behind a reservation form. It seems like her in-laws were coming to town and they decided to put them up at the Baldhead Island Inn. Their uh, cover letter here from 1980, so this would have been under the Baldhead Island Corporation years of Jim Harrington and Walter Davis. It says, Dear Miss Fish, thank you so much for your interest in a visit to Baltic Island and our accommodations at the inn. The island is three miles off the coast of Southport, where 14 miles of unspoiled beach, a huge maritime forest of live oaks, palms, dogwoods, and cedar, a challenging 18-hole golf course and two tennis courts, surf casting is great. 
Access to Bald Hedda is by our passenger ferry, which operates daily on a regular schedule. You'll leave your car on the mainland parking area adjacent to the dock. The inn has eight comfortable beachfront rooms, each with a balcony overlooking the Atlantic. So there would have been eight of these octagonal buildings on the pedestals around South Beach connected by these um, passageways, these thoroughfares or boardwalks. Dining facilities are excellent and highlighted each evening with a cocktail party followed by a candlelight dinner. Remember, this is before electricity is delivered to the island, so they are running all these dining facilities off of a generator, so I'm sure the uh, candlelight dinner was one part romantic and uh, one part just uh, saving some money. <laughs> We're enclosing a rate card, and I hope you can join us for a few days for an overnight stay. You'll find it an enjoyable and relaxing experience. Please call and I'll be happy to make your reservations. And she's right here, Bob's parents visiting. <laughs> in-laws are coming to town. You always want to impress the in-laws. So what did Bill and Polly Fish pay for? What, did, what was their charge for uh, these accommodations at the inn? Well, it looks like it was $70 a day. $70 a day in 1980 to uh, house your in-laws at the Baltic Island Inn. There was a $105 deposit that was requested. So I'm not quite sure because the final, uh, the final money was $70. Um, so maybe that $105 was refunded to her. Um, it says villa and home deposits are security deposits and return after departure. Hold on to that one minute. I'll talk about the, the villas in a second. They took American Express, Visa, MasterCard, or check. <laughs> um, some rules here along with the uh, charge card or the rate card. It says that check-in time was at 2 o'clock. Check-out time was at 11 a.m. Curious enough, there were absolutely no pets allowed. Baldwin Island is a very pet-friendly place today, so I'm not sure why pets weren't allowed back in the day. No food allowed in the inn rooms, and I have a hunch why that rule was set into place. We have several pictures of these poor Generator Society folks having to um, clean up after some raccoons have gotten into their house and their kitchen. And I'm thinking that the inn was not the most secure place, so they're not wanting uh, any enticing food left behind for those critters to break into the rooms. And uh, please note the occupancy limit, um, which was a couple per room. Easy enough. It says, please remember your luggage will be handled several times. So there was a ferry service at this time. It was called the, uh, the, bald, head, the bald Head One. And uh, so there was a, you know, at least some precursor to the current ferry service for Polly Fish's um, uh, uh, mother and father-in-law to get over here. And that's why they're saying your luggage would have been handled, but they would have been using uh, basically a, a floating dock. Uh, the marina was not constructed at this time, so it, much, it would have been way more difficult to get to the Bald Head Island Inn from Southport for their, um, for Polly Fish's step, um, excuse me, not step, <laughs> father and mother-in-law. It says, you gotta make boat reservations, you gotta be scheduled in advance, should be at the dock 20 minutes to departure and that the ferry tickets are an extra six dollars and fifty cents per person there's a lot of deals i'm talking about here maybe turn back the clock to 1980 right should you have a change in plans the villa and home security deposits will be returned only if the premises are re-rented so very very curious so what happened to the Bald Head Island Inn? Well, as I bring up this picture again, kind of foreshadows what happened to the inn there. You can see the beach is very, very close. 
South Beach uh, has always had significant erosion problems, uh, beginning with the original lighthouse, the 1794 lighthouse, uh, which had to be deconstructed due to erosion, to uh, when we pull out some maps at a later date, you'll learn that there are whole cul-de-sacs that were built off of um, South Beach that had to be scrapped because the ocean was eroding at the beach, uh, encroaching on these planned cul-de-sacs, and they had to be scrapped, and they're now underwater. Well, that's what happened to the Bolted Island Inn. What these series of pictures are uh, depicting is when George Mitchell purchased the island, they first had to move the Bolted Island Inn, and then shortly after the Mitchells purchased the island, they had to scrap the inn. And fortunately, somebody was there with a camera taking a series of photographs of the Bald Head Island Inn being deconstructed, just as so many years ago, that original lighthouse was deconstructed due to the encroaching sea. What replaced the Baldhead Island Inn? Well, by 1983, uh, there had been uh, my, way more success in developing amenities under the leadership of Jim Harrington and Baldhead Island Corporation, and then naturally, after 1983, the leadership of the Mitchell family and Baldhead Island LLC, or Limited LLC. So it wasn't necessary uh, to have this very primitive experience. There was electricity, there was sewer, or excuse me, there was at least septic tanks and uh, wells drilled at this point. Uh, and the villas right across the street were completed in 1983, which I think is, I would argue, the little sister of uh, the Bald Head Island Inn. They're very, very similar in design. And um, so what is the legacy of the Bald Head Island Inn? Well, unfortunately, uh, not much. We have a little bit of literature, as I've shared with you, uh, left behind. Again, you can access those via the subject files in the Old Baldy Foundation's website, oldbaldy.org. Uh, there's no sign along South Beach. Um, there's very little recollection I find these days. Um, folks are, are very often very unsure about the dates of the Bald Head Island Inn. But if anything, the legacy is the... Uh, <sighs> Excuse me, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to refuse to touch anything now. Um, the legacy I find now is the Bald Head Island Club. It's uh, in very close proximity to where the Bald Head Island Inn was previously located. And many of the amenities, the precursors to what the Bald Head Island Club offers today were first started by the Bald Head Island Inn. The dining facilities, the candlelight dinners, the cocktail hours. Uh, all these amenities began with the Bald Head Island Inn. And you could argue they even begin in the 19-teens and 1920s with Thomas Franklin Boyd. So the next time you're at uh, the club or the Shoals Club, think about what it must have been like for Polly Fish's father and mother-in-law during that candlelight dinner on these uh, very primitive, octagonal shaped buildings, perhaps on their balcony overlooking South Beach. And think about uh, really how these offerings got started on Bald Head Island and how the amenities have grown exponentially since the Bald Head Island Inn. So let me check in here on Facebook. Y'all are kind of quiet this morning. Let's see what's going on here. If you're out there listening, give us a shout out. Let us know. Uh, Dave, Daniel Ray Norris, awesome. Well, thank you, Daniel, for listening. 
Mackie Miller, fantastic quarantine tour. Well, great, thank you, Mackie. Um, I have a surprise for you in a minute, Mackie, when we finish up here. Anybody else out there listening? We've got quite a few listeners. Give us a shout out there in the comments. Let us know uh, where you're listening from, what your connection to Bald Head Island is. This afternoon, uh, we got a, a special treat for you uh, during the touring with Travis, so make sure you tune in at 2 o'clock. Also want to give a shout out for, uh, hey Patty, I, well thank you Patty, uh, appreciate you listening in. Uh, and again on April 8th we're going to be having that virtual uh, historic happy hour about the history and the memory of the boathouse that Bald Head Island lost due to the effects of Hurricane Florence in the fall of 2018. We will uh, be sharing uh, pictures, artwork. It's gonna be very interactive. You'll be able to be on a camera, so we'll be able to see you, and you'll be able to see me and several other staff members and uh, supporters of the Old Baldy Foundation. We'll all be having our uh, libations of choice since it is BYOB. We can't host you here at the Lighthouse. If you go on our website and choose to sign up for our monthly newsletter, there is a code in that newsletter that you may use in order to bring this program to your computer screen virtually free. $15 is usually our admission price for the Historic Happy Hour programs. So if you would like to contribute $15, we very much appreciate your support during these uh, difficult times. Again, that is going to be on April 8th, so go to oldbaldy.org for information on how to sign up. And when you're at our website, check out our brand new online store. There are all kinds of apparel, like the wonderful shirts I'm wearing, books and puzzles that you're gonna find on that brand new online store. And we will get those shipped to wherever you are uh, self-isolating during these crazy times. Mackie, my curiosity got the better of me. The 2020 equivalent of $6 in 1980 is $20.20 and 70 is $234.75. That is really awesome. Thank you for doing that, Mackie. So that really kind of shows you that's that's about, you know, when you take in terms of inflation, that doesn't seem so bad uh, when you think about it today. So um, that's really that's really valuable information. Thank you very much, Mackie, uh, for sharing that with us. I think our other listeners would find that uh, fascinating to know as well. So again, yeah, to wrap up here, um, check out that online store. All kinds of great products on there. Noni, enjoying your presentation. We had several dinners at the end, several over water at high tide. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome, Noni. Thank you for sharing that. I would love to know if you all have any pictures, Noni, of your time at the inn. Um, if you do, uh, if you have some spare time here now that we're self-isolating, uh, go back here and see if you have any pictures and make sure to share us via email or reach out to Chris. We would love um, to have access to some of those pictures to increase our collections in terms of the Baltic Island Inn. So that's awesome, Noni. Thank you for sharing. So as I promised Mackie and several other uh, dog lovers out there, we got a little special treat. If I go in the store here, Jess is hard working with that online store and that'll give everybody a smile on their face. <laughs> Our shop dog Finn and she is hard at work too helping her mama for the store. Say hi Jess. Hello everyone. Hi Maggie. <laughs> So, hey, everybody, thanks for listening to this morning episode of Quarantine Collections. We'll see you all at a later episode, perhaps uh, this afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Take care, be healthy, and be safe.